Hello everyone and welcome, I'm Alex, the architect for back app and today we'll continue our Flutter and Parse series of videos talking about data objects, today we'll discuss about dates. And depending on the dates that you want uh, to store and what your use case is, Parse already got you covered. Let me show you really quickly. Here I have my to-do Flutter class that we created on previous videos, and if you notice, we have two dates up here that Parse already creates and already populates automatically for us. So created at and updated at are timestamps. So the first one was created and populated when the object is first created. And the second one updated at is created and populated when the object is created. And every time the object is changed, it's updated again. So if you, all you need is to store dates so you can order objects by creation date or updated date so you can have for instance the latest objects to be uh, updated on the top these properties already have you covered but sometimes you want to store a specific date yourself for your business reasons so to do that uh, parse allows you to store dates as a property it's a data type called date i will show you graphically here if you open up our data type uh, Dropbox, here you will find date, and it this will store a date automatically for you. So let's do it by code. So here I have my Visual Studio, where we set our to do Flutter class, where we are going to store our message as a string. So let's change this for, this has a date inside. Or our watch, watched uh, property, with, which is a number, so let's put this to one, and let's set a new property, dot set. We will call this deletion time, which should be the, the date where I want to this to do uh, item to be automatically deleted, so comma, and then I can pass on a date. Uh, in Dart, we do that by typing date time dot now, and then we can try to save it again. So I'm going to cancel this and run Flutter run again. Let's get our simulator. Choose, oops, choose my simulator here. This will recompile my application really quickly. This will close this oldest version and put the new version up again. There you go. Then, so let's go back to our dashboard and reload the data. So remember, I created a new property. We saw that on the latest video. So every time I change the schema of the class, adding a new property, I have to fully refresh my browser. So refresh here. And here I have my deletion date. So for those of you who are really paying attention, you probably saw that the date stored here is totally different from the one set on my simulator. Here I have in Brazilian time, 7.24 p.m. And here I have 22 hours, 23 minutes UTC. So why is that? Uh, parse in back for app is a distributed application. So you have servers all around the world. And sometimes you have to uh, synchronize clients around different countries and perhaps run some cloud code that will run on the time schedule on the server where uh, your parse application is running. So we have to, uh, to find a way to maintain consistency among all the users and all the servers that are running. We do that uh, automatically by parse by 
converting all the dates to UTC format. So every time you save a date or you retrieve a date, it will be on the equivalent UTC time automatically. So if you want to retrieve that date and then uh, display it as your current uh, date and time format of your region, you have to re uh, encode that as your uh, date and time settings. So this is something you have to really pay attention. Some people ask me, oh, I, I'm retrieving the date and it's not in com coming in right. It's probably because it's still stored in UTC. So you have to manually convert. So all your clients around the globe will have their uh, correct uh, date and time settings. So I so hope you, you like this video. I hope to see you on the next ones of the series. See you soon. Bye bye.